everyone and welcome to a new video today I am giving you my February because I'm super late and it's like the middle of freaking March my February wrap-up because as I promised it's one of my booktube goals I plan to film a wrap-up video every single month this year so I didn't do the best in my opinion when it comes to reading but I did better than I could have done I read seven books in February and I had pretty much an average reading month uh, last month. I didn't love everything I read. I thought most of the things I read were average. I maybe had one or two like really great reads. So I am going to of course insert the pictures right here because they were all ebooks and talk about each one, the rating I gave it what my thoughts were so on and so forth you've seen wrap-up videos from me before so let's go ahead and get started so the first book I read in February was called Blind Reality and that's by my girl Heidi McLaughlin so you know I loved it um basically Blind Reality is about this girl who gets um tricked into not necessarily tricked but kind of manipulated into joining this reality dating show where she gets partnered up with a guy a celebrity that she has had this huge crush on and they are competing with against other couples they have to get married and then compete against other married couples for like the grand prize so right off the bat I'm not really in love with this premise because I'm not really a reality show kind of gal I think they're kind of just ugh. So I went into this book just kind of like, oh no, Heidi, you did the thing that I don't like. And while I'm not a fan of reality shows, I did enjoy the story. I ended up giving this book a four out of five, a four, really? A four out of five stars, um, simply because I enjoyed the classic Heidi thing where she really makes me care about the characters, um, the romance, the you know the personal stories of the characters I was there for all of it the only thing that was hard for me is trying to ignore the fact that this was all happening inside the scope of a reality television show once I finally got past that part I was totally on board for the relationship between our main characters but because I just couldn't get behind the whole reality show thing it was hard for me to initially dive in and really care about the characters because I'm like you guys are dumb you're part of this I uh, the show the show part the reality show part and that's not to say that people who watch reality shows you know are bad people of course they're not that's silly to say it's just not my cup of tea so whenever I see anything that regards a reality show I kind of look the other way just because it's not my thing but the writing and the character dynamic fantastic so four out of five stars the next book I read is by K.A. Tucker and it's called he will be my ruin this was a suspenseful kind of adult story it's like a romantic suspense not even really romantic just really a suspense slash thriller kind of a story that I have not encountered when it comes to K.A. Tucker before so I was really excited to give this a try now I went into it not really thinking I would love it simply because I'm not someone who reads a lot of suspense suspense English today Christina suspense slash thrillers I'm more of a suspense a romantic suspense a romantic thriller I need some kind of a love angle in it and that's just my kind of thing um but I did read it I didn't connect with it as much as I had hoped that I would but I didn't really expect to I don't know it's weird I I just didn't there was something about the book that just did not sit well with me I'm trying to go back to my review and see what I said I think I had a hard time connecting with everything um, but at the same time people who loved it I can totally see why they loved it it was a really gripping story it was very mysterious a lot of suspense but there were a lot of decisions that our main character made, I think her name is Maggie, that I just was not on board with. I just, I went through reading it and I was just kind of like, nah, I don't really care, I don't like you. I didn't like the main character, really. So that might have been part of it. But I also just felt like it was unrealistic in some spots where I was just kind of like, okay. 
And that really hurts my heart simply because I am becoming a huge fan of K.A. Tucker. As you guys know, she's been really hitting it right out of the park with her past few books that I've reviewed. But this one just kind of missed the mark for me, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is called Ghost by Jackie Keswick. This is the second book in the Power of Zero series. The first book was called Job Hunt. Um, this is um, a male male romance book, which I am all of, I love male male romances when they're done really well. But I quite frankly did not love this story at all. I did not love it. I didn't give it a full review. I gave it a two and a half out of five stars because anything below a, a three, I don't really review. I just have come to find, because I struggled with Job Hunt too, which was the first book. I didn't fall in love with it. I just felt it was missing the mark. In, in, in a lot of you know places I just felt like I wasn't getting what I wanted to get out of these stories you know who writes a fantastic a fantastic male male romance oh, English <laughs> failing male male romance Becca Vincenza oh my gosh that woman can write male male romance like nobody's business she is probably the um, only person so far that has written a male male romance that I just can't stop thinking about. And that was a paranormal male male romance and I was all about it. So I guess she set the standard for me and now I'm looking at all the other ones and I'm just kind of like, are you going to do what Becca did? Oh, you're not doing it? I don't like it. And I'm just really having a hard time finding that kind of dynamic that I enjoy reading when it comes to male male romances. Jackie Keswick, unfortunately, just did not hit the mark for me. I just feel like there's not enough between the men in this story and so I ended up giving it a two and a half out of five stars I do not think I'm going to continue with the series just simply because I don't want to continue reading something that quite frankly I have low expectations for I'm not saying it's a bad book it's definitely not I will always say that I'm incompatible with something I just simply will say that because there's going to be somebody out there that thinks the opposite that I think and they think the book is a five out of five stars and if that is the case thumbs up but for me I wasn't connecting with it, so two and a half out of five stars. Okay, so the next book I read, it was my first five-star read of the month, and it was, am I lying to you? No. It's my first five-star read of the month, and it's called Carry You Home, and this is by Kay Ryan. It's the second book in the Carry Your Heart series. I loved it this story now let me tell you like I said you have to read the first book before you read this one so I'm not gonna go into detail but let me just tell you it is chock full of emotion of romance of just so much development the plot was perfect it just all of the emotion all of the character growth everything from book one was jam-packed into this book and I absolutely adored it. I was getting a little down because all of the books that I had been reading so far this that month just hadn't been, you know, books that I adored. And you guys know me, I'm very good at picking out books for myself, but I didn't really pick these out. These were books that I was reviewing for blog tours and things like that. Um, but I know I love this series, so I was like, oh, I'm on board for reading, reviewing, everything. And I just knew Kay Ryan wouldn't let me down, and she did not. Definite five out of five stars. The next book I read is called Protecting His Heart by Dana Volney, I believe. Um, Dana is an author that I, quite frankly, have not heard of before, so it was really nice to read something by somebody that I hadn't read before. I really enjoyed this book. Definitely have fun with it. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars. It's about these two, like, agents that are married but had a falling out, but they're sent on this mission together, and all kinds of things happen, and their romance sizzles up again, and I loved it. I love kick-ass females, as you guys know. I'm all about the kick-ass females. And the main character in this, Arabelle, Arabella, I loved her. She was such a spunky, charismatic, you know, just, ugh, woman that I was all about. And then Felix was awesome, too. He was her um, husband that they kind of... But watching them kind of fall back in love was such a oh, swoon-worthy moment. I am someone, like I've said before, I love military romance stories. I love police romance stories, firefighters. Anyone, like, in that kind of 
work, even doctors and paramedics. I love those kinds of stories because I feel like those professions sometimes can get in the way of love and romance. And when I see it happen in books like this and it happens really well, I just swoon and smile because it's just, I love seeing that. And so this book kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And I was so on board for it. So I gave this book a four out of five stars. Okay, the next book I read is called The Howling Heart, and this is by April Bostick. Didn't like it. I did not like this book. I didn't like this book at all. It's about this girl who basically moves back to her father's cabin after he passes away, and she happens upon a community of werewolf-type people, and she falls in love with one of them, and then she becomes part of the tribe. I just, I didn't... The way that this story progressed was so Ugh, to me and I just really oh, I know I normally don't say this I just don't think this was the best writing even though I was incompatible with the story I usually am not com incompatible with stories like this I just think the writing just wasn't that great but like I said there's somebody out there who loved it I'm sure I just had the hardest time believing anything in this story. I, I gave it a two out of five stars because I don't give one stars, but two out of five stars is horrible for me. I mean, if Cassandra Clare and the Mortal Instrument series can have me believing anything about Shadowhunter World and Downworlders, anybody, if it's done well, can get me to believe anything. I just feel like April Bostick's writing wasn't believable for me. It was so far outside my realm of believability that I just couldn't even process like when I was done with this book I was just like oh thank goodness and I never like feeling that way I really don't and I just I did not like this book at all I didn't give it a full review I just said not my thing gave it a two out of five stars and kept it moving and then the last book that I read uh, for the month of February is called Gabriel and the Swallows. It's not out as of the time that I'm filming this video. It actually comes out tomorrow, but I read it. This is a book that's coming out. Um, it's being published by Of Tomes Publishing, and um, I read it. Thought it was okay. I gave it a three out of five stars. Uh, my full review for it will be coming out tomorrow. Um, I just, this isn't my type of reading. This isn't something that I loved. It was, it was decent. It wasn't bad at all. The writing was great. It was just more along the lines of, I just don't care really about this story. It's basically about this, the, the, it's about the growing up life of this boy who's trying to figure out who and where he is, figuring out his love life. It's a coming of age story that happens to have a paranormal figure in it. Um... it was decent. That's really what I can say about it. I don't even know what else to say. Like, people really enjoy it, as I see on Goodreads. It was really lyrical. It was a definitely lyrical type of book, but I read Aristotle and Dante, which is also a lyrical book, and I was obsessed with that story. So there was just something about this one that I quite didn't connect with, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There was just something about this one that didn't make me love it, but there was something about it that was charming enough to where it got me to like it enough to give it three stars. So three out of five stars for Gabriel and the Swallows. So that's it. That was my reading month for the month of February. Um, March, I'm really just going to be reading a little bit more in terms of like um, blog tour, stuff like that. But this book behind me, this lovely, lovely book behind me is what I'm focusing on this week because Cassandra Clare is queen and she deserves to have all books pushed aside for her greatness. And so that's what's happening. I am about a fifth of the way through and I am obsessed. So I will be doing a full review on this book. I'm actually listening to it on audiobook this time um, simply because um, I wanted to read it from a different perspective. Simply, I just said simply because. Because I feel like I don't get to do it that often. It's being narrated by Marina Baccarin, Baccarin, oh gosh. But yeah, I'm reading it from Audible and I am obsessed with her narration. She is doing a phenomenal job. Her voice is just so soothing and so great. I'm loving it. So I'm just letting her start my day off in the morning. Each chapter is like an hour long listening wise. 
So I've been listening in the morning and listening before I go to bed. I'm going to be meeting Cassandra Clare next week. So I want to make sure I have the book done and read before I do meet her. But yeah, so that's pretty much as close as you're going to get for a TBR video for me. It's just knowing that that is the book that I am going to be reading for the next week. <laughs> but yeah. Let me know what you guys read for the month of February. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It's so great to see you even though I can't see you. But just imagine that I'm seeing you and saying hey guys. Um, subscribe to my channel of course if you have not. Um, I am super excited for springtime. The months are getting warmer. And it's getting brighter outside. Daylight savings time is coming up. So we're going to lose an hour. But it's going to get sunnier earlier which I'm really excited about I'm trying to think of um, doing maybe a read-along I know I have my Goodreads group linked down below that I haven't really been doing anything in I think since last June or July so I might pick that up again with some kind of book to at least get you know my reading going again so what are you guys' thoughts on that leave some comments for some books that we can read together um, I don't know what kind of videos you guys want to see I am excited. I want to do some things because the weather is changing and it's getting beautiful. So just let me know. UtopiaCon is coming up. So, you know, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more. Just all the things happening. All the things. My blog anniversary, Nope. My YouTube anniversary, Nope. My BookTube anniversary, Yes, that right there is coming up in a few months. So all the things are happening, guys. So just comment down below with questions, comments, ideas. Let me know. Make sure you thumbs up this video. Make sure you're subscribed. And I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye.